Okay, we should be live now. Let me go ahead and test that audio. Give me Twitch. Maybe, possibly, testing. All right, we're good. Okay, I get the email. Oh, yeah, but okay, we're live. We are live. There's the email. All right, two seventy nine. You ready? Uh, second. I have to put in my fake dehydrated line. I guess it's real. Oh, I too. Fan now has a tuner. Pull up Twitch chat uh, on Firefox just to make sure. We usually don't get chatters, but you know, just in case. Just in case the one comes. Okay. Ready? I am ready. Okay, two seventy. Oh wait. Bet you I did that wrong. In 30. Yep, I right. I can correct. Never doubt me. Okay, three, two, one. Hello, everyone. Welcome to episode 279 of the security. Oh, I just got an error. We're going to stop that. Sample rate 16,013 recognized. It sounds know. like it's using the wrong mic, I think. Could just be me though. What? Mike. Uh, it, it said it before. Let me how, let me see what Discord wants. Discord. There. Mike. Yep. It didn't switch to Mike. This should be better now. That's way better. Oh no! Hold on. Well, the input device is the microphone. Output device be this. Oh, hey, say something. Testing. One, two, three. There we go. All right. Okay. Mike, A2020. Okay, we are good. <clears throat> Let's try this again. Okay. <clears throat> okay, three, two, one. Hello, everyone. Welcome to the Security Podcast here on the In30 Network. This is episode 279, and I know I just up. said that out of order. I messed, messed it up. up. I hit the button, uh -huh. the wrong button, and then I pressed space bar. All right, I'm ready now. Uh -huh. Okay. Three, two, one. Hello, everyone. Welcome to episode 279 of the Security Podcast here on the In30 Network. This is try number three. Literally, third time is the charm. That never actually worked, but this time it did. My name is Hyam, and Tom is somewhere out there. Hi. Over there. He's he's waving to us. Anyway, it's been a while. It's it's hard because, because now the Staples Center is literally the crypto.com arena. And that's how far we've fallen. I used to know Matt. Well, I didn't used to know Matt Blaze. I've seen Matt Blaze talk. He owned crypto.com and he told us he would never sell it. Apparently, when money talks, you listen. And I don't blame him. If they're going to offer you a bazillion dollars to sell your domain, and then you're going to take that money and buy, and they're going to also buy the Staples Center in Los Angeles. You know what? Good for him. But now it's the crypto.com arena. Here's, uh, here's your general uh, in 30 PSA when it comes to cryptocurrency. Uh, investing in cryptocurrency is like investing in lottery tickets. You might hit it big, or you might lose everything. So uh, only gamble, I mean, sorry, only invest what you can afford to lose. I mean, with that said, I think we should make a security in 30 token. Um, oh, we should, we should yeah. If, if you send me money, I will give you uh, some non-fungible uh, selfies of me. And that's, that's, your, that's your token. 
We you can, can check them around the internet. Episode. They're they're worth uh, literally nothing. You will get nothing for them. If you give me the money, you're getting nothing in exchange. But I will send you a selfie, a unique selfie, for every dollar. We can make ten thousand unique selfies with we different can. accoutrements, and then put it on the blockchain. So we can have like regular Tom selfie, right? Like like yeah. this. Um, or or if you want, if you get like really spicy and send me a whole five dollars, I will give you aviator glasses Tom selfie. Could be crypto punk with tiara and earring. Yep. It'll be and great. And then you can just and then you can just right click uh, an in thirty episode from five years ago from YouTube, and you will have a different <laughs> selfie. Yeah, it's great. Anyway, but again, it's the last three weeks, four weeks. The last like six months has been um, ransomware and cryptocurrency. And I feel like we talk, we say this every episode. <clears throat> Excuse me. So it's one of those things that, you know what? No news is good news. But somewhere in there, Windows 11 came out. And how are we feeling about Windows 11? I honestly haven't heard much. Like, I, I guess... Windows 11 in the, the new Microsoft Edge browser is now making it super hard for, or, or they're trying to get in the way of you installing an alternate browser and making that the default. Like, apparently, Microsoft is getting stupid annoying with their stuff again. So, I don't know. I'm on Windows I, I, 10 on the gaming PC. I'm on Linux everywhere else. So, it doesn't really affect me all that much. And I, I guess to be fully transparent, I use Firefox on everything. So, even iOS. Which is just, you know, Safari, but with the Firefox skin around it. Oh, look, it's the all of a sudden, I don't know where Windows 11 comes out. And at least I got my dad from Windows 7 to 10. But the rounded corners, apparently. Look, it's when it's Microsoft's uh, uh, money grab to get you to do more things. I will say that I do like Edge on on Windows I cannot use Safari on OS ten. I j- on OS ten. I just can't do it. It doesn't work for me. Um, I want. What did you say? I want scripts blocking. I, I want. I want to reduce the not the ads, but the annoying ads because I I don't yeah. mind ads. I just don't want to see the same ad a thousand times that follows me. Anyway, we're five. We're four minutes in, and we have no topic today. We want to talk about it's it's between Thanksgiving and New Year's. So that me or Thanksgiving and New Year's, Thanksgiving and Christmas. That means it's our time to tell you what to do when you see your family. And nothing much has changed, but just as a good refresher, just to watch out for. So hopefully you didn't have to do that much tech support at Thanksgiving. Hopefully at this point, everyone is on some sort of smart device and and the computer is a Chromebook sitting in the corner and nobody's really bothering you. But just in case, I'm going to start us off with backing up. Make sure uh, the backups are working. We talk about that all the time. Maybe you buy something on Black Friday and SSD. Sand, I, I don't want to say that SanDisk. Uh, they make really tiny SSDs that are like super rugged and a terabyte's like $100, $120. That is probably good enough. You can sit there. You don't have to back up everything, but back up the family photos. Back up photos. And- maybe, maybe if you're feeling like really, really into backing up, Find uh, the browser profiles, like both Firefox and Chrome, I know, store their browser profiles, like settings, saved passwords, bookmarks, all that stuff, and like a folder, drag that over. Just just in case, like, they've got a saved password for something that they need, like their allrecipes.com account or something, you know, something really critical to the day-to-day operations of the household. And, you know, if they're not in the password manager, chances are they're just saving their passwords in their browser, so not a bad thing to grow. And then while you're transferring that, let's go with the next big thing of of running those updates. I mean, we say this all the time, but really, 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 really run those updates, get everyone up to speed. We just talked about Windows 11. I'm not saying that you should jump to Windows 11, but you literally are there eating turkey or eating your Christmas ham or whatever, lighting your Hanukkah menorah. Um, you are literally there. Maybe you can just fend off everything. It just rounds the corners. There's nothing really too drastic. And set them up there. Um, if start they're with on that. Windows Seven, you definitely want to move. That's that's been end of life for some time. Uh, yeah. Just because, like, Windows Seven is so popular. It's it's basically it took over from where Windows XP was. 
many, many years ago, many eons ago, right? Where everyone and their mother literally were running Windows XP. Well, when that end of life, yeah, everyone had to jump to something else. Um, so, you know, the jump from 7 to 10 isn't super drastic. It's, it's a change for sure. Um, but yeah, it might be an easier path than jumping right from 7 to 11. But I don't know, it depends on what you can get your hands on, right? I mean, um, I was going to say they sell, you can't get the free upgrade. Maybe you can get the free upgrade if you look really hard. But I keep on seeing uh, some some OEM companies selling licenses that seem legitimate for fifteen dollars, because guess what? Microsoft wants you up there, so fifteen dollars may be worth it. I will say computers have gone up in cost, like not a little bit, but like significantly. So we used to say a thousand dollars for a computer for college. That's looking now closer to like thirteen or fourteen hundred. The different the reason for that is because people are keeping their computers much longer, like significantly longer. So instead of two or three years, you're looking at five or six. So the added cost may be may hurt now, but you're gonna keep them longer. Like I'm currently working on a six year old iMac that's still perfectly fine. And I mean, I paid two thousand for it, but okay, there's your Apple tax and everything else. But people are keeping them significantly longer, so you want to make sure. So, so update it, make sure everything's there. Go through, see. We talk about go uh, going through the program, seeing what's not there, fixing things. Um, I would say give it a deep clean. Like go through clean browser the desk. sessions. Yeah. Oh, oh, That's well, it. yeah, like even physical cleaning. Yeah, I actually well, just recently did that with my keyboard because it was awful. Uh, apparently, I had ignored a lot of things over the pandemic, and keyboard cleanliness was one of those things. So, uh, yeah, you can pop those keys off. Do yourself a favor. Like, okay, I am technically a professional programmer. I'm a professional computer person. Um, yet, when all the keys are off the keyboard, sometimes I just blank and uh, just take a picture. Make it easier on yourself. Take a picture, then pop the keys off, then wash the keys. Uh, just a bowl of like dish soap and some warm water and you're good. Let those things dry out over, you know, a day or so. Pop them back in. The thing's going to look brand spanking. Guaranteed. Uh, it's, it's, mean, awesome. it's beautiful. I mean, maybe you maybe you just go and get, a, if, if, if it's for your parents and they don't have anything special, another $20 keyboard and mouse combination and be done with it. Yeah. Um, if your parents are on a laptop, you know what I found as a really awesome gift? A wireless mouse, um, a wireless mouse with the little nub USB that connects into the side there uh, for them to have always. Because I know my dad it, hates the trackpad, and I don't blame i I don't mind the trackpad. I have never gotten awesome with it, but sometimes just having a mouse available makes your life a lot easier. Yes, Tom's showing one right now. So, uh, so I've got. Um... You know, I, I, we don't usually do like advertisements, commercials. This is not a sponsorship. They have never given me money. I am just a happy customer. Logitech makes these tiny mice. Um, this one is the uh, Anywhere MX. I think it's like several years old at this point, but um, super tiny. Uh, and um, I believe it's got, see, yeah, yeah. So inside the body, uh, if you take the bottom plate off, uh, it's just got the, the USB adapter. So it's all just a tiny little self-contained unit. And if they're not using their USB-A ports on their laptop, um, just leave the dongle in. They're tiny now. I think look, the tiny dongle the... is really the thing you, you gotta look for. If it's like one of the big dongles, yeah, they're gonna like sit on it or put the computer down wrong and just snap that thing right off. Make sure it's the, the thin profile. That's what you want. I mean, you can even leave it on. Like the mouse on. Because just two batteries or one battery, but just having it there that they're ready to use wherever it is. I mean, maybe this is the year where if you don't upgrade the computer, just upgrade some of the peripherals. If they're, I, I don't think we're going to be zooming too much longer, but maybe Hopefully. you upgrade the webcam. Yeah. Um, I, I, I saw an article a few weeks ago. The worst thing right now is the Zoom meeting at work. I haven't had that yet, but the Zoom meeting at work has to be probably yep. the worst thing ever. Um, upgrade their webcam. I think the supply chain for webcams has gone. To, like I sold 
I sold a Logitech again, not sponsored, but some Logitech uh, webcam that was really good uh, for like triple the price right when it started. And I have no shame in saying that I did that because you know what? I like money and I had it. So, so maybe buy, start upgrading their things, getting them maybe a better keyboard or, or whatever else. Like you did the backups last year, keep on backing up, keep on updating, but maybe make their life easier. Um, do that on the phones, do it. Now you're going to have to do that on the smart TVs. Uh, just go through. And then finally, I did say physical cleaning, like actual physical cleaning. Get get a wet, uh, wet wipe and clean the things, clean the keyboards, clean the mice, clean the workspace. I'm not, you don't have to open up the case and dust out the fans. You should, but that's not really a concern. But see, see where it is. I bet you a lot of people have stopped using really the computer and moved more to their mobile phone. So the computer is being less used less often and and that'll bring us into the next step. But I think just evaluating the computer like we've told you in the past. Um if you've if you've already done all this stuff, if you're looking for something new, um, and especially if you've uh taken our advice in the past and just got your uh less technical relatives a Chromebook. Go through those browser extensions. No matter what browser they're using, go through the browser extensions. Uh, one of the like the biggest avenues for not like super uh, intense malware, not like crypto locker stuff, but generally annoyance adware, uh, just browser hijacking stuff. Go through the extensions. Remove anything that doesn't look legit, right? Like if you see uBlock Origin or, or Stylus, cool. If you see Tamper Monkey, okay. This person is probably a little bit more technical. Um, those should be fine. Um, unless they're a non-technical person installing Tamper Monkey, then look through those user scripts. That could be bad. But I, on my, my grandmother's Chromebook in particular, she had loaded up like Coupon Clipper and like uh, some thing to find low prices. And the, the only thing it did was when she opened up a new tab, it showed her like a fake google window or google search box with like a million and a half ad all over it. uh like it's not i wouldn't call it dangerous but sure it's probably spying on her uh it's you know shoving a bunch of ads everywhere it's just generally bad stuff that you don't want. it's it's annoying um i really think the only two extensions that you need are some sort of uBlock origin or a recommended script blocker and a password manager i i can't think yeah. of Maybe Tamper Monkey, but like you said, you have to have a reason for Tamper Monkey. Yeah. Yeah, really, um, those are the two main extensions I install anywhere. Is, you know, I mean, Bitwarden. HTTPS anywhere, um, I don't think you need it because the internet at this point is fully encrypted. Yeah. Chrome is probably pushing that. Um, Ghostery was the other good one, but I think it's just, if we're at that level, that's not who we're dealing with. So I really, really think you block origin not even that if it's a less technical person and uh and some sort of password manager like yeah, yeah maybe it's like google docs offline or whatever it is but are you really offline like are you really 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 offline like think about that um but any of those coupon code ones they're 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 not scams but they just waste cycles that you don't need the um uh, I, I think one of the um, like malware tools called it potentially unwanted software, okay. and that's that's basically that's a really good category. It's like it's not necessarily malicious, it's not necessarily evil, but it's probably something you don't. Let me ask you this: Do you have bookmarks? Do you use bookmarks anymore? I use bookmarks all the time, okay. and it's it's usually project work, right? Like. Like I've got my my tiny little Raspberry Pi Game Boy, and I've got various bookmarks to like developer resources or like GitHub issues or like other project things that I'm putting together and doing research on, all organized by folder. Um, or you know, hey, this website looks cool for like having cafe noise mixed with a fireplace mixed with a thunderstorm that I can control independent volume sliders on that I use at work and you know stuff like that. I guess at okay. work bookmarks I use everywhere. Because there's a million and a half things I have to do on a daily basis. I I have bookmarks. I have a few under 50. But I feel like I don't even use them. I just type the domain and I go to them so frequently that that uh, autocorrect just pops it in. 
I but anyway, I I that that was a question I had because I don't know if people are using bookmarks or not using bookmarks, but it seems like people still are. Go through the bookmarks. Um if there's any cruff there, maybe get out of it if a website's dead or whatever it is. There's no reason to have them there. Um so maybe this year is the year you bite the bullet and get some real cloud storage. Um, all the I was going to say all the companies, Dropbox, OneDrive, Google Drive, they all have family software. So Dropbox is famous. You had to pay $100 per account. Um, if you all have iPhones, maybe iCloud. Uh, maybe you're all on Google, whatever it is. And you say, oh, last year I didn't have to do it. But now they're coming with six licenses. Give, give grandma a license. I mean, you have six of them, unless you absolutely need it. And say, here's the folder you're going to store everything in. And that's it. So you have it anywhere it is. If you feel like explaining it to them, that's one thing. But here's the folder. Make your life easier. Start organizing it in there. Uh, make a copy. Make a hidden copy for yourself, just so you have it. So if you didn't want to buy the, what's it called, the backup there, you can at least put the photos in there, or whatever it is. Whatever one you want. You know what? I've been using OneDrive and because it comes with the office license. It's uh six people. Uh let's I think it's I'll tell you at Costco, a family license is eighty nine dollars for fifteen months. So that's actually that's a really good deal. And we've we've espoused how much we love all Microsoft three sixty five. But if you're gonna pay hundred and twenty for Dropbox or whatever Google Google wants, uh Again, 120, whatever it is for, for six people. OneDrive, look at OneDrive. Your kids probably get it from school. So, But the good thing with OneDrive is you can have multiple uh, accounts. So you can have it there. And they give you 15 even if you don't pay for it. So if your kids have the school license for Office, but you don't want to have it like mixing in, you get 15 gigs. That should be more than enough for a bunch of, fi- a bunch of documents that you're going to need. Uh but yeah, I would I would make this the year maybe of the cloud storage. Like instead of maybe buying that that backup drive, you you uh, go with the cloud storage and make it like okay, I gotta pay this hundred dollars every year and just be done with it. I know we this is kind of a, a shift. I know we alluded to it earlier in the episode. Um, I've actually been getting a fair amount of questions from non technical family members, especially over the past few months uh, about cryptocurrency and whether or not it's a safe or valid investment and how much money should I put in? And, oh, I just saw this, this weird thing called in 30 coin. Should I invest in that? Uh, now when it comes to in 30 coin, absolutely you should. Um, when it comes to everything else, uh, yeah, no, probably, probably not. Um, so if you, if you get those questions, like it's, it's fine to talk about crypto, talk about investments and stuff like that. The one thing I would stress to family members who you know, might not be aware of what this new kind of like decentralized finance kind of landscape is, is telling them exactly that, right? Where it's, it's decentralized. There's really no guarantees here. It's largely unregulated. Like there's a lot of good things that cryptocurrency can do potentially. There's also a lot of cost and bad things and scams going around here. And it's, kind of a honestly it's a kind of a minefield to navigate right now if you're not super into this stuff if you're not super uh like up on all of the latest trends and terminologies and stuff like that so it it's potentially dangerous um you know just uh, go in with an open mind um right if if they want to play around with it cool like i what i've told my family members is that yeah it's kind of like investing your money in a slot machine right you might have fun with it, right? It's it's plenty fun to take, you know, a small chunk of money, throw it in some coins and just see what happens, right? Um, but if you're really looking for a serious investment, go talk to a finance professional, right? Go go talk to somebody whose job it is to know what they're doing. Go get yourself a fiduciary, et cetera. Don't take your life savings and put it in the coin of the week. You're just going to lose money um, and, and you're never going to be happy. I mean, with that said, is when the market is good, everyone's a hero and everyone makes money and you can't go wrong. It's when the market starts pulling back, when something happens and, I mean, and Elon Musk stops tweeting or starts tweeting or whatever he wants to do today and something happens and you lose money. It's the, whatever you put in here, be ready to completely lose. 
I wouldn't go to your family members and say, oh, look what I did. I made $2,000 last week in whatever, in Shibu Inu coin or Dogecoin or whatever it is. I mean, if you, if you want to have something risky and you want to try out with Bitcoin, that's fine. But just remember, it is risky. You will, it's, you could lose it all. So we tell people, I mean, I tell people, whatever money you put in, be ready to lose all of it. And not like lose all of it in a sliding slope, like lose it all at once. Like it will crash half and you will lose half your money in a, in a week. And you're going to be like, where did it go? Is it going to come back? We don't know. And I mean, if you said, I want to put a thousand dollars into Bitcoin or Ethereum or Litecoin or the big ones that you've heard of and you're okay to lose it, it may not be the absolute worst investment you can do, but it is still highly speculative. And all those people who doubled their money or whatever it is, just seriously just got lucky. It's they won the essential lottery. So if you hear things about NFTs or DAOs or DeFi apps or whatever it is, make sure the person can explain it to you. Like really, really explain it to you. Because they'll because people who can really explain what's going on can, will also explain to you the risks. Hopefully, hopefully, I I say hopefully. I I am not sure, but it is I, so new that I I think a fiduciary, like you said, would be able to actually tell you what to do. It, it's highly risky. You will you will double and triple your money, but you will also lose it all. Yeah, and it's like the the whole reason I bring this up is because a I've been getting questions from non technical family members who aren't interested in like that kind of computer stuff at all because advertisements and their friends are seeing it and then it's spreading through word of mouth like there's there's a pretty viral effect with cryptocurrency that's happening right now and and kind of a a fervor around the whole idea um and you know it it could result uh, not will but it could result in you know some of your family members losing a bunch of money if they don't know what they're getting into right this isn't, uh, this isn't, you know, a basic stock or bond that you're investing in. It's not, you know, like big box corporation has stock and I'm going to buy it and maybe I'll make 10 cents by the end of the year sort of thing. It's, hey, I invested in squid coin and I lost literally all of my money because the whole thing was a giant scam, right? It, it could happen that way. And there's a lot of advertising money being poured into cryptocurrency right now and it's, it feels really scammy to me, right? I'm sure there are some good players in here, but ultimately, it's it's pretty risky. Um, and that's that's what you should communicate. It's this this thing is a slot machine. Like, and I hate when when PayPal and Venmo say, "Oh, uh, you can buy crypto here, crypto coins here, and pay with crypto coins." First off, PayPal and Venmo are giving you a pointer to your. Uh, to your to your cryptocurrency they're not actually giving you any they're just saying we're gonna write this number down and when you sell it we will handle the money they are not actually giving you anything and that's a huge red flag so you can't move it out of it but second just pay with money it's it's and we said this it's just resist the urge because as more people buy it and tell you about it, the stocks, the the prices are going to go up until something happens. So just be careful with that. Please explain to people. If you're really interested, find an exchange that's really popular. Don't find one with that has no reviews. Find a good one and and just be aware of it and do it right. Yeah, I, I know that was kind of a tangent, but I've yeah. I've got those questions from uh, from some non uh, computer uh, savvy family members recently. So thought it was a good and thing to with, bring up. And then the last five minutes are gift cards in general. So I hate I, I look, I love a good Christmas gift. I love a good holiday gift. I like a good a good whatever gift. Like you want to give me a box with something nice in it, I I'll say thank you every day. Okay. What I I don't like buying other people gifts. And that's not because I don't want to. I just don't want the obligation. But I know a lot of people like, oh, here's a $25 gift card. Here's a $50 gift card. Um, I know it sounds it sounds terrible. Give them cash. Even go to the bank and get them like a Visa gift card. Do not go to the stores and get them a $100 Applebee gift card or, or Target card or Walmart card. There's scams going around. And I don't know the technical details of this. But essentially, somehow they're getting the pin and the code and they're waiting for something to happen so they can activate it the second you pay for it. And 
and it's and people are losing the money. So you get a fifty dollar, let's say, Apple gift card. That was the story that I read, and they somehow had the number and the pin because you know you have to like scratch it off, and then you take it to the you take it to the register. They activate it. They do something. You scratch it off, and then you have fifty dollars. Well, bad actors are figuring out a way in the store to get those things, and then when they see it being activated, they they swoop and steal the money, and now you're out. But if it was cash or a Visa gift card that the bank handed you, the, the chances of you losing that or anything happening is way less. So I am not a big gifter, but I don't give people gift cards because I'd rather just give them cash. I'd rather just Venmo them 25 bucks and say, here you go. And, and generally, the Visa gift card is whatever you want to use it on, right? Yeah. Like if, if I got a $100 like Apple gift card, I honestly wouldn't know what to do with it. Like, sure, I, I pay for I, some iCloud services and occasionally I'll buy an app, but like I, I don't really use Apple services all that much that I pay for them. So I have no idea what I would do. Maybe maybe I'd get like a, a few years of, of iCloud charges taken care of from a gift card, but yeah, I would much rather have a Visa gift card where I can spend it on anything. Um, but yeah. Um, also, if um if you see a family member, loved one, friend, whatever, buying a ton of gift cards or gift cards of a very, very large amount to go settle some debt from some government agency or company, um, stop them. That's a scam. Um <laughs> scammers absolutely love to use gift cards as payment. Uh, thanks to cryptocurrencies, uh, those kind of scams have largely moved on to just getting people to buy and send cryptocurrency, but the gift card scams still do exist. So just something to keep an eye. I'm just trying to think of for gifts. I mean, I don't think we need a gift episode, but if you see a family member using something like you see them in the morning hitting, uh, what's it called? Cancel on the iCloud extra storage. Maybe you go in and just buy them for a year, whatever it is, see what it is. Maybe you don't tell them, you just buy it if you can. Like, I don't know how you would do that, but if you can, just do that. If there's a service that they want, um, make that a gift. Because we're moving now to services. And I think, like, getting them iCloud storage, or we talked about getting them Google storage or whatever it is, instead of trying to solve a technical problem, uh, if it can be solved by purchasing Google storage and letting them put documents in there, maybe that's your answer. And I, I think we need to focus more on make your life easier because if you don't make your life easier, you're going to be answering all these calls. And I'll leave you with this and people still need to hear it. If you help somebody with the computer, they will call you every single day. They will always call you. So whatever you do, make your life easier. Don't go and say, oh, take it to the geek squad or wherever the, 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 uh, the, the tech, the technical people help the person, but make your life easier if you don't know say you don't know don't try to do things you don't want to do but don't jailbreak their phone and say oh this is better solve their problem and try to teach it to them to minimize it because you will get the phone calls don't make my mistake and install linux on various family members computers because you will support that for as long as it takes that hardware to die and trust me uh it's not fun You'll learn a lot, but it's not fun. <laughs> or, or you know what? Get yourself, I don't want to say a TeamViewer license, but install TeamViewer or some remote desktop. That's a better one. Remote desktop application. Oh, we forgot. Go through the routers. See what router settings they have. Maybe get them to check the Wi-Fi stuff. We, we've spoken about this. Update the router firmware. Yeah. It, these are all technical details. Um, I think this year, maybe if you have some extra cash, buy them a technology purchase that will help them and help you at the same time. And like I said, cloud storage or some sort of cloud service for them, uh, that would, and if you don't want to do that, just hand them cold, hard cash. A few years ago, I actually got my grandmother a smart speaker, uh, cause she, she loved playing music. And I, I saw her like going to YouTube on her, her little Dell computer on her desk in the corner of the room and cranking the speakers way up. Uh, so I, I just hooked a, a smart speaker up for her. I said, here, just 
yell whatever music you want the thing to play. And she's like, ah, play Barry Manilow. And all of a sudden, Barry Manilow started playing, and she loved it. So, you know, that's it's not a terrible gift, especially if the person in your life is already, like, tied to an ecosystem like Google or Apple or Amazon or what have you, right? Get them the thing that matches the technology they're already using, right? If they if it's a full iOS and Apple household, well, hey, uh, you know, Apple's smart speaker is probably the best option for them. It's going to integrate well. Um, you know, if it's an all Android, all Google, all Chromecast kind of household, well, yeah, the, the Google smart speaker is probably better there. So uh, get them something. And don't that's get them fit. the other one. Don't yeah. come with an. Don't come with uh, Amazon Dot. In a Google household, don't come with a Chromecast and not in a Roku household. And which one is it? Don't just buy and say, here you go, here you go, here you go. Because trying to integrate that will not work well. All right, with that said, we're over. I know I know, we've said this every year, but it's one of those good refreshers. Backup, update, uh, clean, get through it, make your life easier. It's not going to get any easier. You know, what, you know what a good gift is? A Zoom subscription. It's not that expensive. But I have a feeling we're still going to go. And again, I, I don't want to tell people to fight the vaccination battle, but uh, see, just I would go get the vaccinated. I, I will do it. I will do it. Go yeah. get vaccinated if you're able. Help us end this thing. It has been far yeah. too long. And, and oh, man, I just want to eat in a restaurant again and order a really overpriced beer. That's all I want. Uh, and oh. please, please go get vaccinated. I have had three of them. Uh, you can go get your two shots. It's not that hard. I got I got my three, and my kids and now both have both of them. So my, nice. my family, my family is fully vaccinated by whatever definition they want to use. So we so, are uh, good. It, in full transparency, I got my booster. It it hit me as hard as the second shot, which means I felt bad for like twelve hours. Like I had a minor fever. It wasn't anything crazy. I took some Tylenol, I drank a bunch of water, and I took a nap on the couch for most of a day. That was it. That's the side effect. So if you can get through that, if you can get through like a bad, uh, basically a, a bad cold as a side effect, you're fine. It's not that hard. Just do it anyway, because the, uh, the alternative is not good. Yeah. The alternative is getting COVID and spreading it. Anyway, 34 minutes, we're over. I don't know when we'll see each other next, but hopefully it will be next week. So have a good day, everyone. We will see you hopefully next week and have a good night. Bye. See ya. Save package. All right. Let me turn off Twitch.